His mercies endure forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of God, for His mercies endure forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of Lords, for His mercies endure forever. To Him who alone does great wonders, for His mercies endure forever. To Him that by wisdom made the heaven, for His mercies endure forever. To Him that stretches out the earth above the waters, for His mercies endure forever. And to Him that made great light, for His mercies endure forever. Lord God, we said if this is your will, then your will be done 
Oh God, but if it's not your will, Lord, we pray for your intervention that it will come to a close now, if not before. Oh God, we have so many people are suffering and have suffered. So Father, we look to you from when coming our help. And even if this is your will, Lord, we pray for mercy. Today we pray for you, our health professionals. Oh God, they are overworked in many, many cases, and many, many things have happened. They have to neglect them, their families, in order to protect the health of our nation. We pray for their strength and security forces. Lord God, they too are having a very difficult time to deal with this pandemic and also deal with the other things that they would normally have dealt with. We place them before you, Lord, those who have to make tough decisions, the executive arm of government. We place them before you, Lord. Sometimes they, uh, it must be very, very tough when they want to do everything to please everybody, and yet our health comes before our wealth. We pray before you, Lord God, the judiciary, Lord God, as they too are having their difficulties in doing what is expected of them, and the legislative arm of government, we place them all before you, Lord God Almighty, and oh God, you were instructed, we were instructed to pray for them. But Lord God, we thank you for your holy church, your people that you have selected, and those who have volunteered to serve you in different capacities. You know the stress and the strain. Lord God, but we do it willingly and gratefully because somebody bore it so that we could be salvaged. And we want to, Lord, open our mouths and we want to sing your praises. We want to talk about you. We want others to hear that they too can escape from the wrath just to come. Fathers, we are gathered together. Thank you, Lord God, for the, those who are on for this week. Oh God, not so long ago, remember when we were only 20. We are glad today that we are 50. We are glad for the health professionals who are with us to enlighten our minds about the things that we should know. Oh, mercy upon us this day. Bless us as a family. Bless us as a church. As we have friendship and fellowship and worship together this day. Lord God, in all the needs, oh God, some are going through the difficulties, but I pray you will send words of comfort through the sound, the spoken word, and everything so that the, our burdens can be lifted. Father, we stretch our hands to thee today. No other help we see. Lord God, take the service out of our hands. Set it the way you want it. Inspire the singers, all of us. Inspire, Lord God, those who shall do different things. Inspire, Lord God, the presentation. Inspire, Lord God, the spoken word. Bless, O oh God, that we will leave here encouraged and blessed. Bless, O oh God, those who are viewing online on, on the various platforms in different parts of the island and overseas. Have mercy upon them today. Bless their home, their families. Bless, oh God, those who wanted to come but could not have made it. Bless those, oh God, who should have been here but circumstances did not dictate. Have your way, Lord, we pray. Lord, our neighbors around, I pray too that they will hear your words and escape from hell. Oh God, which is our reality. Father, we look to you today. We tell you thanks. Thanks for past mercies. Thanks for past blessings. Thanks for who you have been. Thanks for who you have provided. Thanks for all that you have done. Thanks for all that you have done. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Lord God, we came this morning on our home. We were not carried. Oh God, we are not
shame. morning will come from the 14th from the Pentecostal hymnal, He Brought Me Out. Number 14 from the Pentecostal hymnal, He Brought Me Out. Bless the Lord Jesus. My heart was
chapter 9, we will be reading verses 18, 19, 23, and 26. And Minister Doug will read for us this morning in Jesus' name. St. Matthew 9, verses 18 and 19. Then we skip over to 23 to 26. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshiped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. We go now to 23. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the mistral and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame hereof went abroad into all the land. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. Bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord Jesus. We sing all anthem, church anthem 102, Faith of Our Father. 102 from the Pentecostal kingdom, Faith of Our Father.
you're the past, anything here is good, you know. <laughs> Jesus, a few times, you start unpacking things. 
preach. I hear Larry preaching in the bathroom this morning. I tell you, I hold the door and listen to the sermon. I couldn't take it no longer. I said, yes, ha. Come on, let's just preach. I said, yes, ha. Sister Natalie Blake, she's in what 
one of those far countries, please contact us. We'd like you to do a presentation from where you are on mental, um, I'm sorry, public health in about two weeks' time. Sister Natalie, you're on. Sister Natalie, please contact me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> public no, youth service announcement. Uh, by way of announcement also, <clears throat> I was told to re repeat this. Distribution of the new voter ID cards will be done in alphabetical order of electors' surnames on specified days of the week as follows. Monday, A to E, Tuesday, F to K, Wednesday, L to P, Thursday, Q to T, Fridays, U to Z, and Brother Law says, Friday's the best days to go, Minister Law says, Friday's the best days to go because once you show up on Friday, we can't turn it off. Glory to God. Thank you. Sister Juliet Douglas, amen, worshiping with us from overseas. Sister Camille Peart, whoever is faith, remember, we have Galaxy 10, Galaxy Top 2, praise the Lord Jesus. We don't know who is ice. Sister Juliet Douglas, Sister Natalie Blake, and we don't know who is S. Cam Tours, welcome. We don't know who is Rob, but welcome. Praise the Lord Jesus. We have Tanisha Grashit Walker. That means Son of Grisabel. Welcome. And all the others, local members, whoever you are, Drapers, all the different lanes and turns, all the way to Snow Hill. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to be going into the rest of the order of service. Brother Mark Fire is going to come and sing a song, then Nurse Philip Cockburn will be coming with a presentation on mental health. Then we're going to be having praise and worship by DG Angel. Uh, I'm sorry, Sister, uh, Sister Deborah's Dream. Amen. Then we have a song by, after that, by her son. And then uh, greetings from the ministers in between somewhere there and Bishop will come in the word. And all of this is going to be done within one hour. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Markel at this time. <laughs> In the dark of the midnight, I often in my
nurses coming. I was listening to Bishop Owen's a few weeks ago, actually last week. And he said, Saints, you know what is keeping me? I just lost my wife of 53 years. You know what's keeping me? Church. I'm on this church. I'm teaching over here. I'm teaching over there. I'm preaching over there. I'm visiting over there. I just have church. And believe me, it gives me a peace. I miss my wife, he said, but it gives me a peace which passes all understanding. The antidote, the remedy, the medicine is church and Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let's give God the highest praise, Richard. After all of this, we could have set up and go. We have the word. There's the word that God sent. And we need to hear it today. Yes, thanks. Anybody in the crowd knows me? Just show me a razor fan. Oh. You know me now. <laughs> But he was wondering who I am, and he sent me to a school. And he doesn't know that that school is probably about 40 years ago. But today we are celebrating Mental Health Week. But today is Mental Health Day, globally, all over the world. And our theme for mental health is in mental health in and in, in an in equal world, an equal world. And that says a lot, right? Yes. Especially dealing with mental health. And I know what is anything about mental health. It's just like I said about my mama. I love mental health patients. I love mental health. We, and our mental health consists of adults, children, adolescents. In the crowd there, down in the back there, could you kindly stand for me please and introduce yourself? And that happens to be my social worker. <laughs> uh, my name is Marianne Patterson and I'm the medical social worker for child and adolescent mental health. Okay, so as you see, we have more people in the team, but you know, no movements and other things. We are only here, both of us. But we have other people in the team. We have our PNAs, we have our psychiatrists, we have our other people from this. And she is from Child Guidance, actually. So we have mental health adults and we have child guidance. So when a child, and surprise, you know, so many children are sick today. So many. The, the, the conditions that the adults have, oh my God, the children have it as well. So, we know we have to take care of them because they are the ones that are going to be in the future. And if from now they are not good, it makes no sense for the future. What is mental health? Mental health is a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his our own abilities. We can cope with no we can cope with normal stresses of life. And we know this part is kind of hard. As you know, the stress in life sometimes, just some simple things can throw us overboard. However, we can work productively and fruitfully and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. Mental health is an important stage of our life, from childhood to adulthood. It can affect how we think, how we feel, and how we relate to each other. Can maintain positive mental health. And we know we have different kinds of different conditions. Depression, schizophrenia, anxiety, and it goes on. But nothing is hard for God. If we put our trust in God and pray and put our condition because the mental health can be just like somebody else. Your diabetes, your hypertension or whatever it might be, it's just another condition. What people want to put it aside, but it's just another condition where we take our medications, and if we continue our treatment, as we say, we can be productive in our community. First, one of the ways to maintain our positive mental health, and I would leave out this one, no one in the world, pray without ceasing. 
stress is the air, and we know mental health has people there to air. So who we need to be to do to deal with our health crisis? So we have to look to him first. So we are going to pray without ceasing. Value yourself. Treat yourself with kindness and respect. Make time for your hobbies and favorite projects. Branch, burden your, broaden your horizons. Do puzzles, go on vacation, plant a garden, learn to play an instrument. Anything that you love, just do it. Take care of your body, and it says in Romans 12 verse one, that your body must be acceptable unto God. So if you don't take care of your body, then you're, you're disobeying God's rule. And taking care of your body will improve your mental health. Eat nutritious meals. Avoid smoking and alcohol. Exercise. Drink plenty of water. We know people to drink the juices, but that's not good enough for us. Get enough sleep. And you know, lack of sleep. Lack of sleep will contribute to depression and other conditions in mental illness. So you must get your good sleep. Don't sit up watching movies if the movie might be interesting when you see certain time. Give her time a break. When you know it's 10 o'clock and you need to go to bed, whatever it is, leave it. Go to your bed. Because you need to get your good sleep to bring you throughout the day. Surround yourself with good people. That sounds good, right? Yes. Because they will say, show me your company and tell you who you are. I know sometimes I don't believe that. Because they are good people in bad company. And no matter what they do, they can't break you. So, at all times, you must be leaders, not followers. That's right. People with strong good family support are generally, generally healthier. You can imagine I feel so good when I see the patients come to hospital and there's a mother, there's a brother, somebody. And you can ask, how oh, is he doing? How oh, is he?
preacher will be on the floor. Doesn't matter who is on. When you see 12:30, you just shift out of the way and let the preacher come on. Sister Stacy and Sister Lati, jump up and shout hallelujah. Come on. And you're the daughter. Hallelujah! Come, come little daughter, jump up and shout hallelujah. <laughs> Sister Bird, jump up and shout hallelujah if you can. Sister Bird, not hearing me. And this time, uh, Mr. Lawrence uh, Mavis Davis and Elder Johnson will be giving sharp greetings, then the singer, then the preacher in Jesus' name. Especially the, the 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 older folks that brethren that have been on the journey a long time. Bless the Lord. Who seems to be some of us we have to be very careful, otherwise we just fade away. The scripture said, Who will bewitch you? Bless the Lord, that you should not obey the truth. So we are here to Give the Lord thanks and praise. And a little about the church that I go there, we don't, we never close. We never close our doors. What we do, we isolate families together and give them a mic. And the group, the family sit together. They even call police and house already and somebody go out there, address the police and tell them what's going on. And the, the police say, good to go. We have service Sunday. We have prayer meeting at the church Monday. We have prayer in the, in the, in the, in the home Tuesday. We have, youth, we have um, Bible study Thursday. We have online family prayer Friday. We have youth service Saturday. Sunday morning we have prayer in the church again. And we do it all over again. We never close. We are, I'm not saying that somebody should follow us or so. I'm not bashing anybody. But I'm saying that the Lord, you know, is keeping us. We have no accident. We have no incident. The Lord is keeping us. Brethren, it's just for us to concentrate and do our part. Because some people are using this situation as an excuse not to serve God. 
all we have to do is do our part and leave God part alone. He will take care of us, bless the Lord. He will take care, he will navigate us, he will guide us, bless the Lord. There, there is so much danger and so much things going around. But it is for us to just keep focus, keep our life intact with God. Because he is the only source now. You see how it's going, company failing. You make up a business and you say, this is it for my life and my family. And, and it just fades away. There is no certainty anymore, bless the Lord. So we have to just keep our anchor and keep holding on to God in Jesus' name.
Bishop Farr has been a man of protocol all these years and he's trained us well. So at this time, it's time to present the speaker of the day, and he's our pastor, Bishop Farr. Bishop Farr is the pastor of this church for about 40 years. Bishop Farr.
sir. On uh, the Sabbath day, the, the, there was a, a rotation. A rotation. So he was in charge of all that. So he was then most likely a Pharisee. And being a Pharisee, because most of the Pharisees did not believe in Jesus, they opposed him. The two, the, the, the two main groups were Pharisees and Sadducees, and they, they had distinction, but there were still Jewish people believe in Judaism, but they had, like we would have uh, denomination, they had that, but that did not make a vast difference. Now, for this gentleman to have come uh, to Jesus, he would have exhausted all other avenues. And he says, my daughter, if, um, if it's the same story in Mark 5 and Luke 8, it would, have, it would have said it was an only daughter. She was above the age, uh, about 12 years of age. She took sick and she died. I can imagine he was have exhausted all avenues, medical and otherwise, and would have told the priests in the temple, and they would have done what they could, but regardless of all that, she died. Right? The Bible said he came. Now, being a Pharisee or a Sadducee, and he used to come to Jesus, out in the public, that is, that in itself is, a, is according to their culture, is a no-no. And he came and worshipped. In all in order to worship, he had to, when I get down on his knees, on his face, he had to uh, uh, do a curtsy and he had to acknowledge, no, 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 you. So therefore, you right away, you are saying goodbye to what you are in and what you are coming from. You ha can't have that job anymore. You come down, you go into public and go on to bow down to Jesus and that. But you don't understand, my daughter is is, is dead. Or when he left her, she was undying by no she's dead. I am desperate. It's my only child. I am I am in problem. I have to I have to get help. I've exhausted all other means and the only means I have is to go to Jesus myself. I can't send anybody. This require me. The mother, it is not appropriate to send her not going into their culture, so it's better for me to go. And he went and, and, and he must have been very surprised when Jesus immediately said, I go, I go with you. And he started off. And why we skip the verses that follow is because on the way they met the woman with Ishra blood who happened to have the same 12 year problem that cycle that she has been in that position for that but, but we skip that for today and we go when Jesus went after dealing with the woman or the woman dealt with him and he was he, 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 he went to the place there's something I, I know you're wondering what is my what my topic I delay telling you because I want you to think. And so we look at verse 23. And yes, and when Jesus, yes, when Jesus has come to the ruler's house, he saw the minstrels. Now, who are these? These were musicians. They play flute and harp. It was a culture. Somebody dies, you come and, and if you do the research, you'll find that they had, a, you know, professional mourners. People who were employed just to ball and they make songs. Yes, and they would sing about how good you are. Just like in our days today, and if the devil even died, immediately as he died, he becomes a saint. And they sing about him, and they, they make much ado. And some people, I remember seeing uh, a woman who was very regular around town as a, 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 as a, a mourner. And one day I saw her at the funeral, right in here, morning, and I whispered in her ears, and I said, you never know you're doing. You said, I don't know him. <laughs> I don't know him. But brother, she put on somebody. And you know this thing is catching. So when you say, why? Then everybody. I, 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 I 
was right there, nurse, a door, 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 something just, just struck my mind. When I was a boy, and why, why mental health is kept a secret? When I was a boy, to, to be mentally insane was a, was a crime. A officer of the law, it was called lunacy. So you could be arrested and charged for lunacy. So therefore, oh, lunacy, so, uh, they, they, they were kept all put up. You understand? Because it was a crime. It was, when we became independent and things were, they were, were changed that, that we, we hear about mental health. We were only heard then about lunatics and, uh, and so forth and so on. That, that, that is just a parenthesis. I go back to what I'm saying. So when, when Jesus got there, there, he saw all these people. I don't know what they would normally have done. I don't know they would normally have done. That they, this, is, this, was, this was the culture and the custom that they do that. But Jesus said something which I want to speak to you about, which is very profound. And uh, he said unto them, my topic today, give place. Amen. Give place. Hallelujah. Or get them out. Yes, or stop now. Or move away. Jesus said, give place. Now you ain't going out of your country. You're going out of those things. Until. But when he shows up, it's time to do what? Give, give place. place. In other words, move away with that now. That is over. And I, I, I rise to say the reason why many of us are hampered in our Christianity. Because as though we accept Jesus and we ask him to help, there are some cultural things and some things we believe and we will not give place. But Jesus said, when he saw them, he said, give place. Give place. Said, in other words, okay, enough now. Give me a break. Excuse me, excuse me. Give place, give place, give place, give place. Um, when I was an uh, uh, active member of the Jamaica Red Cross, uh, and we were, uh, were trained in first aid, we were taught that when you are doing your first aid or whatever you are doing to help, and you see a health professional comes, what you do? Give place. Immediately the nurse walks in or the doctor or any other health professional, you step back. Give place. Give place. Ladies and gentlemen, give place. All our Christianity, all the apps to be in operation. Because all the apps that will not work unless you give place. It will not move until you give place. The Bible says, and look at it very profound, that this was what the grab me. And uh, the Bible said uh, that, that, that um, when the people were put forth, not gone, they, that put forth means that they were asked to leave. When you put out the minstrels, the flute, uh, and the, when you put out what you are accustomed to do, when you put out what you are doing, then Jesus stepped in and did what he wanted to do. But he would not have done it until you give place. Am I saying to somebody today that there are some things that are standing in our way? Somebody told me, shoulda, coulda, woulda. But Jesus said, give place. I came, somebody, so where I was going, you are told, like myself, you are dunce, you are not going to come to anything good. Because you did not meet somebody's expectation. But when you live with that in your mind, that the dunce, the this, and all the negatives were thrown at you. And you live that way, you walk that way. But when I got in, Jesus, I gave grace. It's not what they say now. It's what he say. It's the moderate instructor. Give grace. What is going to happen? Give grace. The Bible said, when they were put forth, then Jesus went in and said, to the God, that shall arise. But what is going to happen? Am I talking to somebody today? Somebody was a prayer online. Somebody was 
every day. You say, a big old man like that's all eat. Yes, because I'm giving place. Because you can't ask God for long life and health. And you want to eat all the salt. You know what say? You salt mackerel. You say, what, you, what is nice about salt mackerel? It's just the salt. If you want mackerel, buy mackerel. But we have to buy the salt one. And I just make a savory food and salt fish and salt mackerel and salt pork and salt pork and salt pizza and corn pork. And the, oh, 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 it's, a, it's a salt. It's salt. Give place. You're a child of God. Give place. And a life's work is good for you. Give place. And say, none of that for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord Jesus, I, I forget me something when we shot. Huh? First time we have our chickens around the house, right? Yeah. Okay. Sunday morning, we get a chicken. So today we buy a chicken. But for God's sake, will you buy um, almond free chicken? Or grade A? Why is there grade A and a B? What's the difference between grade A and grade B? Crocs are grade A. I went to a grade and asked a grade A chicken, and the first thing he wanted me to price. <laughs> he wanted to know if I'm aware that is a price. That's true. And I said, young man, I said, if you have the chicken, the chicken. and you ask for the price. Give me the chicken, sir. But I guess some people have been frightened because they want it, but you don't pay the price. There's a difference between grade A and grade B. Yes. Not the chicken. Because when, when God Almighty fed the children of Israel, when they said they want meat, I believe that what they got was chicken. But it was great day. Because we're almond free. Yeah. Am I talking to you today? Yeah. And some of the things that you like, that, that I really like. There, there's somebody sing again. There are things that I love that are dear to my heart. Hmm? Praise the Lord Jesus today. Yes, sir. Get blessed. Yes. Get rid of that. Get rid of. I am not going to do that for you. Note, I close. Note, not him say, he's going to say, excuse me, not my, not my thing. You have to know that you invited me and I'm not going to work along with them. So you please get rid of them. Give place. Yes, sir. Give yes, sir. place. Yes, sir. Give place. Yes, sir. It's either me or them. I don't know how long he waited, but the Bible said, and when they had put them forth, then the operation of the miracle began. And I just want to say, not only did he, because she died from an illness, so he would have healed the, healed the illness and called back the spirit into the body. Because if the illness is still there, so am I right? And you're called by the Spirit, then you're not, you're not going to stay too long because she's going to be gone. But when you give place, uh, everything is going to come around. Give place! Some people, their suspicion says, and who is that? Or they just look at the person and say, what do you mean? What is he doing here? Or what is she doing here? Because certainly what you believe and what you are asking to be done is not going to work with that. So? Place. So, give place. So, give place. And give place means get rid of that. Not this bad. It's a custom. But give place. Give place. Because you are celebrating death. And I am come to bring life. Hallelujah. And two of them not going to work together. So, get rid of the death thing. And I will bring. Give place, and it might prevent other people from seeing the Christ because they are seeing the culture, they are seeing some things that they didn't expect to see, and they can't see the 
Jesus that you're talking about when this is still taking place. Yes, For when the people take the flight and start to walk on, yes. somebody says, so what happened? Yes, sir. Somebody, what happened? Jesus gone in there. Yes, sir. Sorry, how to come out? Yes, sir. You're going to hear more about this some more. God bless you and thank you. I don't think Bishop has no problem. Come on, somebody, give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. I heard the commissioner of police making this point this week. He said, no matter how bad the traffic is, once a policeman show up, whatever is going on, I am in charge. Yes. Whether you have light or whatever it is, once a policeman show up and identify himself, he takes charge. Give place. So Jesus shows up, brothers and sisters, give place. Give place. Yeah. And he said, I will not work. This is hitting hard. Bishop, I'm glad you are the, you are the active presiding bishop because Shiloh nationally need to hear this. Because a lot of teachings, other people are not teaching something like this. Give place. When Jesus show up, glory to God. When, when you get saved, give place and let Jesus work in your life. When Jesus walk to you and, and he's, going to, he's going to say to you, give me place. I'm waiting. Yes, sir. No, you're not competing. When you're ready, you tell me. When you're ready,
to the altar with the offering, drop it on the offering plate, on the right here. And I heard it this morning, I heard it this morning in my spirit as I was getting ready to church. He said, I don't know if it's me and Lord he's talking to, but he said, I want to do something special for you this week. But I want to sow a seed into different from the offering. I want to sow a seed into the blessing that I'm going to give you this week. Hallelujah to God. So 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 anything you want to sow a seed. If you don't sow nothing, you can get nothing. Come up with a dollar. Plus your offering. Just it up the offering on the altar. And watch God work. That's, that, that's it. I know we did something last week, but he said, do it again this week. I said, Lord, you might say, you, 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 that's all Brother Williams do. But he said, do it again this week. He said, do it again this week. He said, do it again this week. Come up, walk up to you. Four days later, sing it again, son. Hallelujah to God. You see, you're giving place to God. Follow the protocol. Follow the protocol. Mm -hmm. morning, well, I, I hope it's God. I'm always putting that in as a disclaimer because, you know, people say God spoke and God didn't speak, but he said, you have been in COVID, you know, salary cut and all of those things, but you have been giving a certain amount for your tithes out of what you've earned every month, and it isn't consistent. And you realize that the blessing now really passed that threshold. He said, I wonder if you make the faith move. And say you want Lord to bless me with about two hundred thousand dollars. How much of the faith that? How much of the tithe that? Twenty. Twenty thousand dollars. Twenty. So you share it up and find about twenty thousand. Either you don't make twenty thousand dollars. Some of it is seed, faith. And he said, if you try that, just watch. And somebody who has a bigger faith wants three hundred thousand dollars, and you find thirty thousand dollars divided into four, and you put that into the offering plate and say, Lord, I want you to bless me with a three hundred thousand dollars a month salary. Glory to God. Bishop is going to be praying forward. I don't know. You signal to me or whatever, sir. Well, she's our brother. Oh, shut up, Musa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, all of us are going to join today. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.